Howdy, lieutenants and economists. The most volatile, evil, disgusting things on the planet, humans. If you have a video request, you can always go to assholeconsulting.com. Yeah, I am gonna charge you, kids. And that is the importance of not fucking up. You are such an asshole! Oh boy, all right. I poured a cup of coffee from my mug from invisiblehandfashion.com. I did not heat it up enough. I'll slam it here. And we have a special day here at Asshole Consulting because this video right here is going to be the longest asshole consulting video request in history. This is one long ass one. But he did pay, what was it, 175, 200, and this is the full force. This is the full look under the hood. What's going on? Uh, anal and analyze, analyze, assess my entire life plan. So I guess this is like a very thorough checkup. Which I guess for 200 dollars a shot I do. <clears throat> hey Cap, how you been? Tired, sleepy, tired, moving, sick of it. Sent you a few emails a couple of years ago. I hope you find this update and the follow-up questions entertaining. I'll try not to rant too much, but we'll share a positive story for a change. Go, I like we're we're changing lives here at Asshole Consulting for the better. At the time, I was a clue of something, twenty-something, well on my way to becoming an alcoholic. If I remember correctly, I was looking for advice regarding my resume as well as an off-the-wall software entrepreneurship opportunity that cropped up. I believe you said something to the extent of don't work for equity. Oh, I remember this one. I charged you extra. <clears throat> I charged you the you didn't listen to Cappy tax, which is an extra $25. <laughs> That's like, <clears throat> oh, you got a wound and yeah, I told you to avoid here some salt, asshole. Um, and warned me to be weary of older people. It looked a little too good to be true, and it was. So unsurprisingly, the older partner in question ended up becoming a scammy internet marketer and the subsequent falling out last year led to something of an alcohol and drug induced spiritual crisis for me. So you, now had you listened to Cappy, would you have avoided this alcohol? What damage did you do to your liver and your pancreas? Because you didn't listen to Cappy, but you listened to some gray haired baby boomer fuck. <laughs> the, the baby boomers are your enemy, dude. They're your fucking enemy, especially if they're still fucking scamming and wheeling and dealing in the fucking internet world. God, what's a baby boomer doing? Oh, internet marketing. Get the fuck off to the goddamn nursing home. Here's your fucking golf clubs. Go the fuck away. And now one of those nice Florida ones. You go to Alabama, you piece of shit. Hang out with Jessup. All right. A lot of coffee in me. Um... By the way, the product I created ended up making mid-six figures for this guy. Yeah, but not you, if not more. My compensation was contingent on a future success that was around the corner, and I was teetering on poverty. I had rent on a room, and I vividly recalling hunting for quarters to buy something or other. Somehow, like all the other times, it all seemed fine. <clears throat> you don't take... you. Hey, I'll take equity on top of a big old fucking hunk of change in cash. Cage. I'll pay you an egg. Fuck you, Boomer. Cage. Cage. Can you say that? Say it with me. Cage. Yeah, you know that Social Security check you got? Yeah, no, give me that back to me. Thank you, fucker. <clears throat> Still, it's interesting to see a project as well as a foot in the door of SoCal. Peeking behind the veil and seeing the world through semi successful eyes of various black hat entrepreneurs who made it, as far as you knew was a transformative experience for me. That world of non-leased Lambos, sure, sure, non-leased, okay, Ty Lopez, who made it uh, within reach. It seemed, in fact, still seems actionable. But after the business relationship was cut short, I went down about as quickly as one could go. I owed my one and only friend 15000 for keeping me above water during that time. I wish the world had more people like that. Yeah, people that just give you money, sure. I think you are from Russia. Maybe you're used to communist times. Here, we give you money. Huh, no bread to buy, but here is money. Just like Venezuela. Ha <laughs> ha, Cortez. <clears throat> uh, anyway, some serious soul searching and honesty. I ended up quitting the booze and repairing myself. Left to my own devices when working on software projects. I figured 
getting a normal job would be a struggle. Instead, it turns out that my hard fought skills are compensated by a Silicon Valley company here in a place in Southern California to the tune of 155,000 a year. And my compensation is primarily tire kickers. Uh, the work itself is easy, but keeps you continuously growing. The hours are flexible and I have a nine minute commute. Damn, you pull that off in California, that right there is worth 40 grand. The management is cool, reasonable, as my and has my back. Despite all of its politics, the levels of bullshit are minimal. Compared to before, I'm putting in maybe 5% of effort a week that previously I would put in a single day. This is like a vacation. Things are looking up. So on a positive note, some questions. Uh, 155K is contractor salary. It doesn't include benefits, health, perks, phone. The list is endless. And pre precludes raises, offers no PTO or vacation, though at this company that rule is so loosely. Enforced Temple Community uh, is at will activity. Well, what's your question? You just told me something. That's not good for you. That sounds wonderful. When I was working on that lucrative project, there was a moment of clarity and euphoria when I thought how well it was all going, making a, de a real dent in the world. Okay, you dumb fucking millennial. You weren't getting paid, you were borrowing money. You were working for a baby boomer cocksucker fuck, and you thought you were successful because you were making a dent of the real world. Look, millennials, number one, you're not going to change the world. That's just some pie in the sky bullshit. Your teachers and your parents and the television, well, and the internet fed you to make you think that you have point and purpose in life, okay? The only point and purpose in life is to fall in love have some really great friends, a cool couple great friends, maybe raise a family if you want someone or not, and to produce fucking shit that society wants. Society has evolved. You actually think society and the world has evolved to not advance? Landing on the fucking moon, developing electricity. Oh yeah, fuck this. This society, this world doesn't know what it's doing with its millions of years of experience, of existence, and then probably multiple millennia of uh, 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 not not uh, exist, but experience as well, like uh, advancing in technology. You think you know better because you got some fucking liberal arts degree or somebody said, you got it because what, Cher told you to go change the world? Fuck you. You are wrong. You don't know shit. You don't, and knock it off with you. Don't make it a change in the world. You are a fucking tard. Stop wasting your life. Stop getting in us real productive people's way. You know who also thought they were going to change the world? The baby boomers. And what did they change it for? The better or the worse? Oh, the worse. I love how the millennials hate the baby boomers. Oh, fuck. <clears throat> but, but, but you're going to become exactly like them. I mean, you're, you're, just, the, you're just the baby boomers version 2.0. So knock it off with this shit. They think, I'm going to save the planet. I'm going to change the world. Shut the fuck up and do your goddamn job. And please stop asking for more money and bailouts. How's that for starters? How about you stop being parasitic and produce some fucking shit we want? You don't know what you am going to shut up. Making a dent in the real world. Almost entirely by myself was intoxicating. Yeah, okay, you made a dent in the real world, sure you did. This whole time I've been living and breathing success, but since I've been ejected from- What success? What success? You were parasitic! Your, your existence required other people sacrifice, but you were enslaving people part-time to keep your ass alive. How is that success? I mean, like, if you were a non-profit liberal arts major, a uh, government worker, I could see, well, it's successful, I'm a teacher. <laughs> you were a failure by every measure. I don't care what you were doing. You needed other people's money. You needed to enslave other people so that you could live. You were a parasite. No, you are not. I'm not saying that you were maliciously, consciously trying to do that. But you got to get this mentality out of your head. <gasps> I'm a change to do Shut up. Get some fucking work in, make a fucking paycheck, and pay for your goddamn... You do that, you're in the top 5% of millennials if you just support yourself, okay? And that's all success ever was. If you don't need other people to survive, if everyone did that in the world, there'd be no problems. I got to change the world. Look up the cannabis feminist. Look up that fucking wreck. Oh my God, you want to talk about a failure of a human being? Just constantly sucking resources from everybody else. But since I've been ejected from that, all I have that I have all of the technical skills needed, but no vision. Okay, you got skills. 
It's incredibly frustrating. How does one go from about finding smart people who have actionable ideas I could execute? Where do these people hang out? How can I find someone to compliment my weakness who isn't a mouth-breathing retard? The overwhelming majority of people are so mind-numbingly boring to talk to, they seem like NPCs to grind my small talk skills. All right. Your vision is going to come from one of two things. You either work for somebody and their vision, you get your wage, and you shut the fuck up because that's not your vision. You are the cog in the machine, like you were for that dopey guy that didn't pay you. This time, though, you demand a wage, okay, like you are, so you're doing that part, right? You either work for somebody or you work for yourself, okay? Don't be asking me for visions. Where do I find a bit? Because that's the same question as, what, what business should I do? How do I find the girls? All right, don't ask me that question. You gotta go find your own vision. Go do whatever the fuck you want. Go program an app, go whatever it is. You seem to have the background and the skills. You're working in the industry. You're doing all the hard work now that you might say, hey, you know what this industry could use? It could use an app that does X, Y, and Z. And then you go program that fucking app. You know what this, this industry over here could use? It could use a program that does A, B, and C. Then you go program that, all right? Uh, or whatever other, uh, hey, you know, a bunch of kids were raised without their mo their fathers and they're all fucked up. Maybe I could be the surrogate father on the internet and people will pay me thousands of dollars to yell at them on the internet. Go and do that, okay? But if you're not going to do entrepreneurship, whatever that is, you're going to be somebody's bitch. Now, you want to be paid to be somebody's bitch. And don't worry, everybody is somebody else's bitch. The trick is to get paid for it, which is you, you, you screwed that up the first time, but now you're getting paid handsomely, and there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with that, okay? But you got this millennial itch that you got to go fucking save the planet or something, which you're not going to do. You're not going to do that. You're not going to be Steve Jobs. You're not going to be Bill Gates. I mean, they didn't save the planet. Oh, my God. The planet will always be in crisis. The next group of retards being brought up after the millennials. Oh my God, I've got a problem. More government money. Solve it with more government money. Did you know if you just take government money and you put it, poof, the problems go away. All right, so there, there's always going to be a problem in a crisis. All you want to do is make as much money for the least amount of time as possible, least amount of pain and agony, and then you have as much fun as a higher percent. Live your life, the highest percentage of your life, free, and then you die. All right. Now, how you want to achieve that, I don't care. Right? But you're either going to work for somebody or you're going to work for yourself. And knock it off with this religious-like thing. I need to find a vision and purpose. And shut up. Just shut up. Be either a good employee or a good entrepreneur. Either or. All right? <clears throat> now, where do you find smart people? You can't find smart I'm going to start throwing that up there with how do I find the girls. There aren't smart people. You are probably very much a genius because, I mean, I'm busting your balls now, but I need you to get down to reality uh, because this I'm going to be a superhero bullshit just as it's going to fly when you're near your 30s, all right? <clears throat> you're probably really a super intelligent. If you haven't read the book Curse of the High IQ, I strongly recommend you read it. But the problem you're facing is you're very likely in the 130 to 150 range of IQ. There's less than 2% of the population have your brain and intelligence. Um, and what, one in, one in 50, one in 100 people you're going to meet are going to be able to converse with you. That's just their intelligence. That doesn't talk about personality differences, other chemistry, whether you like these people or not, their politics. I mean, there are some brilliant communists. Fuck if I'm going to talk to them because in one regard, they're stupid. We just need more of other people's money. I need more money. Well, that's great there, Marx. That's a real fucking genius idea. Go shave you beard, you goddamn piece of shit. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, it is mind-numbingly boring to talk to people. You, look, you came into this, I don't know how you came into this world, uh, this working world, where like, I need to do, you came in it like you're a superhero with a cape with no superpowers. And you still have this expectation that, wow, really? You mean most of the people are sheep? Mind-numbingly boring to talk to? They seem like NPCs to grandma? Yeah, really? You mean in California of all places, too? Where the people who make six figs regularly vote to tax themselves at a higher rate? People who, like, let illegals in and spend money on education that doesn't educate no kids, but not the roads, and then you guys sit in traffic. You mean the people who willingly sit in traffic 90 minutes, one way, one way there and another way back, three hours of life every day, you mean those people are sheep? No kidding. You don't say, huh? 
But they all know better because I'm an evil white male and I'm a conservative, actually libertarian, but because I'm just ignorant, right? Those people, you're expecting them to provide you some kind of intellectual stimulation? Not to mention you got a streak of independence, which is good. That's good because you're looking for some vision and some kind of higher point and purpose. Dude, most of the people in this world just want their fucking material shit like you and your Lambo. Oh, my Lambos. They want their fucking pretty cool, cool pad or their flat. They want fucking clothes and the proud of shoes, particularly the women. They want to go and party, dude. And they want to be popular, especially in Southern California. And they'll do it even if it cripples their finances and they're fucking slaves. Nine hours at the office, 10 with lunch hour, 12 with commute. That's what they want. And they think that they're happy. They think that, and you think you're going to find an intelligent person in that group of fucking lemmings. You're not. You just not, okay? So, yeah, get used to that. I don't know. I, the, the advice that I keep giving, go to a meetup group. Fine, go to, go to Mensa. Get your IQ tested. Um, maybe go to, to like a programming, uh, you know, there's programming meetup. I see them like Python. I'm like, oh, I wish I knew Python. I could hang out with those people. I just went to a Dungeons and Dragons meetup group yesterday. Bunch of fucking Spurgeon tards, man. Holy shit. And there was no one, I mean, I was almost about to walk out because these kids were mentally ill. And, and just, just, and here's my ultimate answer. To how do you find the smart people? You don't. You just fucking don't. It's lonely. It sucks. You go out. God, heaven help you if you're in good shape like me. And then how do I find the good looking, in, uh, not good looking, how do I find the smart, in shape people? Holy shit. Good luck finding that. And those that have time to go avail themselves. Focus on your work. Make your fucking money. Your goal should be fuck you money. That should be your goal right now. Is build up fuck you money. And reconnaissance. So read Curse of the High IQ. Then go read Reconnaissance, man. Okay, because these things are within your control. Yes, go to the Mensa meeting. Go to the meetup groups. <clears throat> I hope to God you find some really intelligent people. But I'm just warning you, you're not. I, I got... Scores of very intelligent people. Only problem is they all live across the country. I gotta go visit them because they don't have the time or the money or both to come visit me. Yes, so the majority of people are morons. Related to the above, how does one go about identify, uh, uh, identifying problems to solve in various fields that others would be willing to pay a few bucks for? It truly feels like software developer nowadays is a few subscription services away from true financial independence. Dude, you are making $155,000, which admittedly in uh, California is, is not that much, but you're making enough you can be financially independent if you save your money. And you are asking me the question, what should I do for a basement? I will talk to you about Hikes Ketchup. And that is the only thing I'm going to tell you about because the rest of it is you, me, 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 me. Fuck, I'm so pissed off. You wanting me to tell you what your biz, how to find it. I don't even want to tell you the formula to finding a business idea. You know, here's how you find a business idea. You go through life, and if something pisses you off, ask yourself, why is this pissing me off? It doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be small. It just has to be something that pisses you the fuck off. And you're like, God, this is pissing me off. And then you ask, is there a solution to this? Is there a way I can solve it? And there's a business idea. There's no formula, there's no methodology. This pisses me the fuck off. Is there a solution for it? Heinz ketchup, glass bottles, this is before your time. In the olden days, and by olden, I mean the 80s even, Heinz, for whatever dumbass reason, decided to put all their products in glass bottles with no exhaust port. So you'd see people hitting the, like, you have to hit the, Look it up. You take the bottle, take the cap off, put, 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 put. and then you'd finally start to get where the air would convect or whatever the word is, and then some mustard or ketchup would finally come out. And then it wouldn't be the amount you wanted to just go bleh. And then you have way too much ketchup in it. Now, that's pissed off hundreds of millions, arguably billions of people, trillions of instances of time. Before someone finally got the idea of, hi, now, I'm an MBA student. I are very smart. I went to the Harvard School of MBA. What if we had plastic bottles? And now you got plastic bottles. I don't even think you can find the glass ones no more. And some real super genius said, we'll put a big ass cap at the bottom so then everything goes down to the bottom and then we just squeeze it out. Holy shit, fucking genius. You know what? 
the guy or gal, whoever came up with that idea, probably made multiple. Well, they probably they're kind of like you. They came up with the idea, and their managers just took all in, and all the profits went to the uh, shareholders. Uh, that's how you come up with a business idea. Your particular skill would be this annoying software thing keeps happening. How do I do it? Hey, here's here's a billion dollar idea because I'm not going to do it. <clears throat> you come up with a thumb drive or some kind of device. Here, this is a trillion dollar idea right here. Guarantee you me. You come up with some kind of device that I just plug into my car, which I don't own yet, but these modern brand new, brand new cars. I plug it in and it turns off all the automatic bullshit. It turns off that cunt's voice saying, you have gone too far. You are going too fast. I want, it's like the anti-nag device. It turns off the rumbling. It turns off the dinging. It turns off all this automatic shit. It turns off the on and off thing where I stop and the engine kills. And then it turns back on when I hit. No, kill it all. All right, that is a billion dollar idea. Right? So I don't know how, that's your opinion that's an, that is the most annoying fucking... I don't even own one of those cars. That's so when I rent one. I'm like, oh my God, I'm never getting a new car. Never. And if I do, you guys are turning off all that shit. I don't care how much it costs. I'm not buying that piece of shit. There. Gave you a great idea. <clears throat> what should a 28-year-old do with 155K in income? Well, it's more like 75K after your taxes. Stock crypto change seems like gambling. My plan at the moment is to climb the ladder as hard as I can, then hop to Silicon Valley where total compensation is... 250 to 300,000 for good senior develops is not unheard of. That type of income should be enough to afford real estate and have tenants pay for it over time, being able to actually enjoy life. But for my 40s would be nice. All right, um, you don't want to go to Silicon Valley. You want to be able to work from home. You're still with that dude, bro, bullshit. If they paid you $500,000 and got you a house right next to you, you're nine minutes from your current office. That's awesome. You're not going to get that in Silicon Valley unless they pay for it. And they're not going to unless you're in an outstanding programmer. All right. What I would do is instead of you, like, I'm going to be in Silicon Valley with my six thing, my book, why don't you read Reconnaissance Man? Why don't you also read Poor Richard's Retirement while you're out? And I'm not saying this to plug my books. I'm saying because you got to read this shit. You're all wrong. You, you think the goal is money and status and prestige, like every dipshit millennial ever did. Right? I'm telling you it's freedom. You want to be like a couple other clients I got. You want to be working for a Silicon Valley company, a California company, in Las Vegas, where your income is based in California, but you live in Vegas, you don't pay state income taxes, your living expenses are like a third, God, a fifth of what they'd be in Silicon Valley. And then you get to fly the fuck around and go hike and go do whatever the fuck you want in Vegas. That's what you want to be. You don't want to be living in San Jose. You don't want to be living in San Francisco. You don't want to be living with that traffic and that bullshit. The place you are now in Southern California is the nicest town to be in California. Right. If you had to live in a communist shithole, this is the nicest part of the communist shithole to live in. You have relatively little traffic. You have benefits of a major city. Uh, but you do not want to go to Silicon Valley. Right? Uh, I would not buy property in California. Oh, yeah, probably would go up in Valley. Yeah, you'll suffer capital gains. But I, there's no way. And not Silicon Valley. Not San Francisco. No fucking way. Not worth it. Um... What should you do with that 155 in income? All right, max out your IRAs. For, this is where we'd read the investment section of Bachelor Pad Economics. All right, tell, I'm going to tell you what for, for a little bit less money than what you paid me, you could have bought the book and read. Maybe you didn't have the time. But you're going to want to contribute to an IRA of some kind. Um, if you're a contractor and you can still contract for other companies, you may want to consider setting up an LLC. Or an S Corp LLC combination, Chad Elkins can help you out with that. And then you would set up what's called a SEP IRA, uh, which has a little bit higher contribution limits. But you need some kind of investment, retirement account. So you either get the Roth uh, tax benefit or the traditional benefit. You either get a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA. And they have different but tax benefits. You get to write off your taxes or you don't pay capital gains. At your age, I'd recommend the capital uh, Roth version, but that's up to you. <clears throat> um, I would pay off any debts you have. I would build up a micro FU fund. So you have three to six months living expenses. So if your boss ever goes crazy, you say, fuck you, I don't need you no more, goodbye. 
you don't have to take the next job that comes along. I would get 200 ounces of silver. I'd say get guns, but you're in California, so you can't. Um, and then if there's any program or languages you need to learn or certifications you need to get, that's what I'd be throwing my money into. I'd reinvest in, in you, yourself, your, your um, you know, learn to code. That would be the best thing that you can do. I'd say to get a return on your investment. I would not be looking at housing. You don't know what you're doing right now. You don't know where you're going. You have no life goals. And now you're reaching out for something. And now you're just, oh, I'm going to buy a house here. No, 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 no. Because what if your goals change? Like, oh, God, fuck California and fuck this traffic. I want to get the fuck out of here and go to Vegas or Denver or some other place. Which is why, again, you need to read Reconstance. That's another thing I'd spend your money, even though it's not, quote, an investment. It is an investment. I would travel the country. Figure the fuck out where you want to live. All right? And even places you don't think you know about. Have you been to Salt Lake City? You haven't? Well, I suggest you go there. Haven't been to Spokane, Washington or Coeur d'Alene, Idaho? Well, I suggest you go there. Spend some money flying out to places, rent a car, just drive around, check it out. Um, but no, you're not. You, and here's another thing. You, you don't want to get into real estate with rental property. Because you're gonna you're gonna run the risk of having bad tenants, and then your life becomes a nightmare because you got bad tenants, and you're not able to focus on making money. What? So so your tenants could pay the taxes and insurance, maybe on your property. They're at best they're subsidizing your living expenses, and heaven heaven help you. I don't even know what the tenants' rights laws are like in California. Like basically, fuck the landlord, give all your money to the tenant. No way. <clears throat> is it just me, or is dating nowadays a complete and total clusterfuck? Yes, it is. It is not you. And, and you are in California again. Considering how much effort it took to overcome things, even in the last year, not to mention immigrating here and learning English years ago, I look at these girls and wonder, what do you have to offer me? How am I not scoring any better? Um, <clears throat> this is different than how do I get the girls. And I understand you're an immigrant, but you're also young. And you wonder, like, what, is it bad luck? No, dude, it, this is how it is. This is how it is. It is that bad. Um... You mentioned, let me go through here. Uh, here, also, this is not pre precisely related to the question. Well, it is, but I went on a hike date with a girl today, and when dropping her off after a lovely time, I ran into a rather burly African-American ex-husband about 6'4", dropping off her baby at the same time I was pulling to drop her off. This is like an addendum to the last question I sent you still. This situation was just so deliciously surreal I couldn't help but start laughing on my way back home. Yeah, it's, it's a bit <clears throat> a bit more surreal. Um, yeah, she didn't tell you about the fact that she was married before I had a child. Uh, come I came to the United States with all the disadvantages, no language, no money, no old man. In about a decade, I'm now in the 1% of millennials when it comes to income. Yeah, I mean, like I said, you got you got the expect you got the the work ethic. Your expectations, though, are a little bit delusional. This is kind of a recent development. The start of what you've written this is too much. Is it too much to ask for a girl who isn't fat or retarded? It, it is too much. Um, that's not a lot to ask, considering how much I'm bringing to the table. I'm just getting started. God damn it. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I just I didn't want to identify you too much here. It is that bad. And it's like the IQ. Well, too fucking bad. There's not that many smart people to go around. There just aren't that many uh, quality marriage traditional type of women to go around. There's plenty to have sex with. Um, but when it comes to your age and your generation, I, it it is a clusterfuck. That is the word to put it. <clears throat> um, you got your single moms that had, as you ran into, um, that had some other man's kid. All right. Uh, socially here in the United States, you're from a different country, but socially here in the United States, it's not only perfectly acceptable, but encouraged and championed and heroic and brave uh, for women to have children out of wedlock. I think it's 42 or 43 percent of kids are born out of wedlock. OK, uh, the stigma is gone. And I used to think like, you know, no matter what your upbringing, you think, OK, maybe you weren't brought up right. Or maybe your dad wasn't around. But you should know not to do drugs. You should know not to have a kid you can't afford without without another parent around, male or female. Uh, no, I. Uh, it is shocking how easily men and women can be programmed, especially women. 
Women today, your generation is the first generation of women who have been brought up under the, there's been no taint, there's been no shame in having an illegitimate child. Uh, and you think that would, something would kick in, like, hey, it's kind of a bad thing to do. Like, there's going to be, no, nope. they, they just, well, I need a baby daddy for my baby. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's what a third, I'd have to look up the statistics. The other third of women are absolute hardcore careers at your age. Um, they went to college. That's all they know. That's all they've been told. Uh, being a traditional woman, whether that's being a supporting wife or a supporting mother, stay-at-home mother to raise the kids, that has not only been purged from their system or uh, their mentality, but it has been shamed. It has been... Uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> criminalized it's, it's oh god how would you you know the biggest thing you don't want to rely on a man even though there's tons of government programs you don't have to rely on a man that's the single mother that just spit out the word damn it uh the the point is they have no interest at your age of getting married and being a mother or a wife or both uh their career is uber alice and then third even if they were there has been no training to train these women uh, not even train introduce them to the concept of, well, you would like to get married and have kids. Well, there's this thing called the man. And let's tell you about this guy. And I know, I thought it was all right, but apparently it's another human being. They have psychologies and sentience and emotions and feelings and preferences and tastes and, and hopes and wants and needs, <clears throat> just like you. And if you'd like to be successfully married, you need to consider what this man, that's not even, not even there. I, again, I've said it before, at best, women are trained to be your competitor. At worst, they are being, being trained to be your sworn enemy. And so, unfortunately, what that means for people like you who would like to get married, who would like to you know, find a traditional wife, is you are not viewed as an equal partner uh, in this relationship, let alone a necessary one if you'd like to have a successful uh, family with kids. You are viewed as a thing. You, I mean, very, very, quite literally, you are viewed as a sperm donor that has to be guarded and, and, and shielded against because you might just become the asshole dick that she's going to have to divorce. You might, um, you know, just leave her at any time and because and there'd be no reason you would leave her or anything like that. Uh, you're not an entity to be loved, to be made happy, to be asked, what does he want? What can I do to make him happy? There's none of this... I love my wife more than myself, and the wife loves her husband more than herself. There's never that kind of love. It is very truly a business exchange, almost to the point that you are an asset to purchase. And I hate, I hate it sounds so degrading, but this is just what I've witnessed. This is just what I see. I, I've, this goes from the baby boomers on. A lot of women view their children as things. I want to have a baby. Yeah, but do you want to raise it or let? No, I need to have a baby. Just ask... Uh, Oh, what's the Yahoo executive and Sheryl Sandberg? They have babies. They don't raise the kid. It's a thing. It's a Ferrari. It's a Lambo. It's a nice piece of fit. It's an armoire. It goes well with the drapes. Husbands, I think, you know, if they ever gets to that point, they view it the same way. You are a thing to have. And it's, oh, I'm, I'm to purchase it. Uh, I just am going to be entitled to it. <clears throat> It'll just, I'll just go down to the husband store, get myself a husband. No consideration, or very rarely is any consideration given on the part of women uh, about what it would take to attract a man to get that man to not only commit to a relationship, but propose and, and be a quality husband. You are very much, I'd hate to say it, I'd say 90, 92, maybe not 95, but 90 plus percent of the female population are not thinking in terms of what can I do to be a good wife? What can I do or love? I want to love a man. I want to cherish this man. It's not there. It's, let's sing it now. Me, 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 and so it's career, and, and oh yeah, they want kids, oh yeah, they want it. They want their Prada shoes, they got their, they got student loan debts. You're not a conscious thought. So even though women may say on surveys or whatever that they want to get married, they want to have kids, 
They have not been trained. They have not been educated. They haven't even been plain informed. Like, okay, if you want that, there's this other thing required called the husband. And you may want to think about what those guys want. <laughs> what guys? Big tits, tight ass, long hair, long legs, stay thin, have no debt, be nice. That's, that's all the guys want. Uh, AJ Cortez is lit. I mean, it's, that's it. That's it. I can't even do that. I got the tattoos, the shaved head. I, got a... <laughs> I mean, yes, it's that bad. But if you look at the decades of how they're brought up, and by brought up, I don't mean by parents because parents weren't around. I mean by teachers, media. I mean, who's the one? Cardi B is the big, I don't even know who Cardi B is. I just keep hearing her name and she's got a big ass and she shakes it, I guess. That's what they've been trained in. That's what a quarter century of propaganda, influence, brainwashing, indoctrination, but just then you can't get brainwashed, just how they were raised. And no, there are no, okay, there are, they're very rare. But yeah, it is too much for you to ask for a girl that's not insane, not on drugs, has a job, is going to put you first, knows what it's like to support a husband, support a guy. Not, not financially, I mean emotionally, <clears throat> all that. Um, uh, even understand the concept of love or selflessness. No, it's career, social media attention, proud of shoes, my education, how do I pay off my student loan debts? I got to vote for Hillary. That, that's really what it is. They're, they're more concerned about those things than they are, you know. So even they say, oh yeah, I'd like to get married and have kids. That's their, their hindbrain, their genetics talking. The rest of the brain is not taking forward action saying, what do I tangibly, actionably do to get that? So that's, I'm sorry for you, pal. It's like the IQ. There just ain't that many to go around. And you're in California. I, I, I won't date girls from, I won't date girls anymore. <laughs> uh, I will, I dated two girls from California, never again. Never again. They're fucking psycho. They are delusional. They're expectant. They, they have, they, they're just crazy. I fuck them. No way. Mm -mm. So again, focus on you. Focus on what you can control. Your finances. Save up some money. <clears throat> Where do you, I mean, maybe, here's, you got one good thing for you. You may want to go back to your home country. And this is kind of the way, and I'm not saying live, but to find yourself a wife. Uh, because I have some friends who uh, are ethnically not from the United States. And they ended up having to go back to their home country to find a wife to find a woman because they want to raise a family um, and these cultures were very different than the United States they were not your traditional white cultures um, and beyond the traditionalism that would come from finding a uh, going back to the home country there's a lot of parallels in you being from that foreign country that you'll have in common even on an unconscious level that will increase I think your chances of finding a good traditional woman and uh, I think it's worth going back there. Uh, of course, you want to look out for the gold diggers and the green card hunters and things like that. But if I were you and you want to get, if you want to date, go ahead. There's plenty of girls you can date. That's no problem. But if you're looking for something serious, more long-term and stable, you're going to have to go back to your home country. And you will be able to suss out the, the mail order bride types, of which another friend of mine from a completely different country, he went to Ukraine. He's not his fourth wife. Dude, come on, it's a scam. Who wants to date your 60-year-old ass? No, she doesn't love you, you idiot. Anyway, I hope that's about it. I ran a bit long, but your videos have always been therapeutic for me. I hope you can get some bits and pieces of my rant out there for your audience to get a kick out of. Let me know what your rate are these days. Well, it was very much a lot expensive stuff because you had to pay the I didn't listen to Cappy tax. All right, that's it. I got to do a fucking interview. Questions, answers. You can go on assholeconsulting.com. The links are everything down below. Guys, books, all right? It, I, I charge a pretty penny. You could probably solve your problem for a lot cheaper if you're just going to read my books. Admittedly, though, it's going to take you a lot more time. So if it's worth your time to pay me, you don't want to read the books, I'll address you. But Curse of the High IQ, Reconnaissance Man, Bachelor Pad Economics, and then Poor Richard's Retirement. Get those if you got finance and life questions and you don't have the money to pay me here. All right, that's it. All the links are below. We'll see you guys later. Toodles.